part five of our conditional loop series and we're going to be looking at nested loops and those are not loops that are in uh, bird nests they're, they're just loops within loops it's loops within loops so let's take an example let's take an example we did in uh, our series on four loops if you remember correctly the prime number a prime number is a number that has only two factors one in itself so if you want to take a number like five and you want to take all the numbers from one till five like one two three four five how many of those are factors in other words how many of those numbers can go into our number without a remainder and if it's only got two of them then it's a prime number so for example one two three four and five one can go into five without a remainder and five can go into five without a remainder but two three there's always going to be a remainder there so therefore it's a prime number so we loop from one to our num so we're going to keep so whatever our num is so we can check it five we can check what 21 is a prime number we go from one to that number and we want to check if each number like our variable we're going one two three we're going to check if r is a factor of our num we're going to check if one's a factor is two a factor is three a factor is four a factor if it's a factor in other words it can go into it without a remainder then we increase a count some sort of count variable which is a hey, we found the factor that we should probably initialize our count before our loop as well so we're going to increase the our count for the factors and then once the loop is finished then we check our counts value at the end of the loop and if it's two that means we only found two factors therefore we can display the number and say hey this is a uh, a prime number now that that's the code to work out a if a number r num one r num is a prime number now what happens if we want to display the first hundred prime numbers then we want to do this code but we want to do it for like one and then two and then three and then four and then five is five a prime number is six a prime number is seven a prime so whenever we get to one we want to do this code and then two then do this code then three then do this code we're going to keep doing this until we get to a hundred prime numbers now i don't know what the hundredth prime number is so i don't know how many times to do this loop so we're going to use a conditional loop we're going to repeat until something now the problem here is i'm not going to check if our num is a prime number a hundred times i'm not checking five is a prime number a hundred times i want to check if one is a prime number is two i need a a looping variable that will become our num so our num needs to become a looping variable so i'm going to make our num a looping variable by initializing it to 201 so then we will check if one's a prime number and run all that code. And then I need to make our number two and check all this code. So then, in other words, inside the loop, we need to increase our num. So our num is going to become one, and we can check if one is a prime number. And then we're going to check if two is a prime number, and then three, and then four, and then five. Okay, so we've got our sequencing going. But how do we know when to stop? Well, we're going to apply our RCT principle because we're using a repeat loop, so it's RCT. So we need to initialize it so we want to find the first 100 prime numbers in other words we're counting the prime numbers and the moment we find a prime number we're going to add one and we're going to keep doing this until we get to 100 so we need some sort of count that's counting the prime numbers i don't want to get it confused with the factor count so i'm going to make a r count prime okay not optimus prime because it's not transformers this is just r count prime so r count prime is a zero because we've got no prime numbers at the start and then we check one is one a prime number no it's two a, ah, two is a prime number so what happens we need to do the change we need to change our count prime at some point so when do we want to change well every time we find a prime number we must display it so where do we do that well we're not display we need to count it so if we look at our code there the white bit at the bottom there if our count is equal to if our count fact equals to two then we display the prime number but i also not only display it but i want to say hey we found one so then we must increase our count prime there so that every time we find that's when we know we found a prime number so that's when we increase count and we say hey we found one and we do the loop again hey we found a second one okay let me do the loop again oh wait, this wasn't this is not one and then this is not one either oh we found another one and we keep increasing our count prime until what we need our test how when do we stop well we want to find the first 100 prime numbers while well, we counting how many we find so we must count until our count prime equals 100 the moment our count prime equals 100 we can stop looking because we found what we're looking for we have found what we're looking for if we get to 100 for our count prime so we set our count prime to zero that's our initialize every time we find a prime number we increase our count prime that's our change and then at the end we test to see if our count prime is 100 because if it's 100 then we can stop looking so let's see if we can do this in delphi 
So here we've got our program and basically all it's doing is it's going to ask the user for a number. So we're going to give it a number and it's going to check if it's a prime number. So it sets the number of factors to zero, go from one to that number, count the number of factors and at the end say, hey, if it's two, if it's got two factors, display the number. If it doesn't display the number, then it wasn't a prime number. So let's say, so 53, that's a prime number. But if I say five, yeah, that's a prime number. And if I say nine, it doesn't display because nine's not a prime number. So that's my code at the moment. That's the loop. That's the inner loop. Now we want to repeatedly do this until we get a hundred of those prime numbers. We displayed a hundred of them. So we're going to put a repeat over here. Repeat. And then we're going to over here, going to go until. Actually, let's do a while loop because we did a repeat loop in the, in the example in the beginning. So let's do a while version of it. While. And we want to do all the stuff, so we're going to have to put a begin, and we're going to have to put an end here. This is the end of the while. Okay, so while do. So what are we going to do? So first of all, we need, we, we're need. we not going to check if 53 is a prime number, like however many times. We want to check if 1, 2, 3. So we don't need that anymore. We're going to check if our num, we're going to start it being a 1. Let's give it a 1. And we check if one's a prime number and then we want to check if two's a prime number. So at some point at the end of all this, we're going to increase our number. And so that is my looping variable, basically. That's my looping variable. So we give it a default value and we keep increasing it inside the loop. Okay, inside our while loop. Okay, so our number's going to become one, test it. So you see there's a loop, that's the outer loop and this is the end loop. That's why it's called nested loops because there's loops inside loops. So... We've done the looping variable. Now, in this case, we need to do the RTC principle. So we need to have to initialize. We've got an R count prime. We need to initialize it. So we are counting it to so R count prime. We initialize to a zero because we have found no prime numbers. So that's the R. Then we need to test it. What are we testing? Well, we want to, while this, it, we want to find the first 100 numbers. So while R count prime, is less than 100, keep doing this code. While our count prime is less than 100, keep doing the code. The moment it equals to 100 or goes more than 100, we can stop doing the code. So that's the test. And then when when does our count prime change? It changes when we find prime numbers. Well, here we display the number if it's a prime number because it's got two factors. So not only are we displaying it, but we're going to increase our count prime. So that it happens. Now, this is key over here. I want to show you this little part. This R count factor, we put it inside the, the, the while loop. We can't put it outside the while loop because if we put it outside the while loop, it's going to start off being zero and it's going to count the factors for one. And then when we move to the second number, which is number two, it's still going to be a one. It's going to think that it's got one factor already, but we haven't even started counting the factors. So every time we take a new R num, we need to reset the number of factors to zero so when we take one start it at zero count how many factors then we take the number two start at zero count how many factors we're going to keep on resetting our count our prime our count prime however starts off outside the loop and it only changes inside the loop when we find a prime number so make sure you know the difference between our count fact and our optimus prime i mean count prime okay so there's the code to display the first hundred prime numbers i'm quite interested to see what what the hundred prime number is so is prime boom so there, there's the the hundredth prime number i think is that four five hundred and forty one so there's all the prime numbers so two three five seven eleven eight, all the way 53 is a prime number 59 all of those are prime numbers up until there that's our hundredth prime number so there we go so there we go we didn't know what it was so we had to keep doing it until we got a count that got to a hundred and so there we go there's a loop well the for loop is inside the while loop so this is nested loops for more videos in this video series as well as other videos go to our youtube channel click on the playlist option so you can see all the options available to you follow us on facebook and twitter we'd love to hear from you and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way